Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to smoke beef ribs in an offset smoker. Now we're gonna get started by building a fire. So we'll open up our firebox, open up the side door too, get a couple of fire lighters going, put our charcoal chimney on top, and then we'll fill it up with briquettes or lump charcoal. So we've got about 10 to 15 minutes before our briquettes are ready. So go ahead, get yourself a sharp knife and we'll get these beef ribs trimmed up. So we're gonna start trimming on the underside. You've got a few options here. You can score the membrane, you can take it off, or what's probably quickest and easiest is just taking the membrane out in between the bones. Now that is super tough. I take this off as it's gonna allow for better smoke penetration, and obviously that's just gonna be really chewy as well. You can tidy up any excess fat on the underside if there is any while you're here. And then we're just gonna flip it over and then take off any excess fat off the top as well. All right, so that fat's not too thick there. That'll render down nicely. So I'm happy with how these are trimmed up. So let's get them seasoned. Right, so if you've got a favorite beef rub, go ahead and use that. Well, honestly, salt and pepper would do the trick, but we're gonna lay down some of our steak shooter and top it off with some salt and pepper. That's just a 50-50 mix of kosher salt and cracked black pepper. Now the salt and pepper is gonna give us some really nice bark and I'm gonna coat the underside in a little bit of mustard just to help our rub stick to the meat. Right, so now we're all trimmed and seasoned up. All we've gotta do is wait for our briquettes to be nice, red hot ashed over and ready to go. So we'll come back then. Right, so our briquettes are pretty much ready. Chuck some high heat gloves on and we'll take the chimney out. Then I'm going to put my charcoal basket in, and then we'll pour our briquettes in. Now, if you don't have a charcoal basket, just make sure your side firebox door is closed so your briquettes don't fall out. Then I've got a beautiful piece of iron bark here. Just going to get that on, and I'm going to maintain my fire over this side of the firebox just so there's less direct heat coming into the cooking chamber. So now we can open up our chimney stack, and we're just going to wait for our log to completely have caught a light. Should only take a couple of minutes. That log's burning nicely now, so we're gonna shut our firebox lid. We're gonna leave our side door open for now, and I'm gonna place the next log we'll use on top of the firebox. So preheating your next log is gonna ensure that log catches fire really quick and it burns nice and clean. Throughout your cook, you wanna see that nice, thin, clear, blue looking smoke, just like we have here. If you've got that thick, heavy white smoke, your fire's potentially smothering or there's not enough oxygen in there. If you wanna learn a bit more about offset smoker fire management, I'll chuck a link down in the description for you to check out. But for now, we're gonna get our smoker up to temp. We're gonna to look to run these beef short ribs at about the 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius range. So once we're up to temperature, we'll get these beef ribs in. All right, so you're always gonna get a higher reading on your temperature gauges on the lid as it's pretty close to the firebox. You've got a lot of direct heat that's rising and causing a higher temperature. I know on this smoker at around 400 Fahrenheit, it's actually at about 250 Fahrenheit on grate level. So if you do wanna chuck a meat probe on the grate level just to see what's happening on your cooking grate, go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna get these beef ribs on. As you can see, I've got a drip tray underneath there and I'm gonna face the thickest end towards the fire. So we'll shut our lid and let these beef ribs smoke away. So our job now is just to maintain that clean burning, steady fire. And after about an hour and every hour after that, we're gonna spritz our beef ribs. I'm just gonna use water, but if you wanna use beef stock or apple cider vinegar, that's fine. It's not really gonna help with any more flavor. It's more to help with a bit of moisture retention and bark formation. So we'll check back in in around an hour once we're ready for our first spritz. All right, we are just over an hour in. These are looking awesome. Getting a little bit of drawback on the bones already. Let's give them a quick spritz. And while we're here, check our fire. Just about ready for another log. So we'll get that on. I like to leave the lid open until that log has caught a light. So it only took about 20 seconds. That's burning away nicely. So we'll shut our lid, put another log on top. All right, so we're almost four hours into this cook. We're due for another spritz. So let's open up our smoker and have a look at these ribs. We'll have a quick check of our internal temperature as well. So around 160 to 170. Just spritz, shut our lid and keep it going. So if you wanted to wrap your beef ribs, you'd probably do so at around this stage. We've hit that 160 Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius internal mark. 
and our bark's looking good. Personally, with beef ribs, I just like to let them go for the entire cook unwrapped until they are probing like butter around that 205 Fahrenheit or 96 degrees Celsius internal mark. And that's what we're gonna do for this cook. So we're gonna come back now once we're ready to check for probe tenderness. All right, we are eight and a half hours into this cook. We've been maintaining that steady fire. We've been spritzing. I reckon we're just about ready to check for tenderness. So let's open up this smoker and do that. Probing really soft, a little bit tight in the middle there. So our internal temps were around that 195 to 200 Fahrenheit mark. So our ribs are super close, some parts were probing perfectly, and I reckon that spot through the middle that wasn't quite there will only be another 10, 15 minutes away. So once these ribs are ready, we're gonna give them a rest. Now I find beef ribs quite forgiving. Now I'm just gonna let these rest at room temperature for 30 minutes before I slice and serve them. But if you've got the time, I definitely always recommend resting for at least an hour. And if you have wrapped your ribs in butcher's paper or foil, make sure you let them steam off just just to stop that cooking process before you rest them. So we'll come back now once we're ready to slice these open and have a look. Let's cut these open. Safe to say they're nice and tender. Seriously, how good did they look? Time for a taste. Oh man. The taste and texture on that is unbelievable. The steak shooter, the bark you get from that salt and pepper, the tenderness, that is one of the best beef ribs I've had. Now they were the Black Onyx brand by Rangers Valley. We picked them up from our butcher at Austral Meats. Highly recommend that stuff. It is super consistent quality. Oh, I could have more of that. Let's have a look at these other ribs. So tender and juicy. They are some of the best beef ribs I've had. So that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.